you found out the three trait, the three most common traits yeah. of highly successful people. You remember yeah. those? Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> it's it's so funny. A superiority complex. So the three most common traits of hyper successful people that they looked at, and it was interesting because there's the influencer world wants to be like you have to wake up at five or you have to do cold plungers or whatever the fuck, right? But the thing that, but there was actually very few that they all had in common. So number one was that they had a superiority complex. They thought they were better than other people and that they deserved more. The second is that they suffered from massive insecurity and feeling that they would never be enough. And third, they had impulse control. And so you've got this combination of people who are like, I want to do this big thing. So this big toward thing. And they've got this big away pain that's like, I'm never going to be enough. I always have to do more. And then they have impulse control that keeps them focused on the goal without seeing the woman in the red dress yes. or getting pursued by her. And yes. that like, so it's like shoot high, have a big thing that, that motivate, like have a big tiger behind you and stay on the path. Have you ever heard uh, Jordan Peterson talk about that study of starving rats in a tube with a spring attached to their tail? No. Fucking brilliant. This is, this is what you're talking about. So um, starving rats are placed into a tube yeah. and they have a spring that is attached to their tail that can measure the force that they pull out yeah. and that's a proxy for desire. Then they waft the smell of cheese in from the front of the tube and the rat pulls and they measure how hard yeah. they want to go. And you think these rats are starving, they would be pulling pretty hard. Then they do another iteration of the study. This time they waft the smell of cheese in from the front, but they waft the smell of a cat in from behind and the rats pull harder. Yeah. And what's the lesson? That you not only need to run towards something that you want, yeah. but you need to run away from something that you fear. Yeah. Now the problem, and this is, I, I like superior, superiority complex, crippling insecurity, impulse control. Right? Yeah. I like that. The problem is the people who we admire the most due to the most success in the real world don't necessarily have the most admirable internal states. That to me isn't necessarily the most peaceful, blissful way to live your life. Mm -hmm. What does it say that, especially in the modern world, we uh, revere the people who yeah. have external accolades of success mm -hmm. and yet the three most common traits of these super successful right. people lead from a place which is almost objectively miserable? <laughs> unadmirable yeah how yeah. do we how do we square this circle i think it's just what are we solving for so um like i mean a lot of people i love watching last dance which is michael jordan's you know mini docuseries phenomenal yeah unbelievable um i think most people could see him there and be like i don't know if i really envy this guy's life like he still seems like pretty upset despite being a billionaire despite all these you know these uh, these these other things and so i think that if like what are we solving for? Like my, my closest friend, Dr. Kashi, he has a statement because he coached Olympic, uh, Olympic teams. And he was like, champions are broken. I was like, huh? He's like, they, people look at champions and try and find something that that champion has that they don't have. And he's like, but it's not that at all. He's like, they lack something everyone else has, which is an off button. They just don't stop. And at the end of the day, like if we're, if we're optimizing for outcomes, then the most broken person will win. The person who has the absolute biggest, you know, desire for achievement, the absolute biggest fear or pain that they're running away from and the hardest impulse control. Now, impulse control, most people would agree is a good thing. The other two, not as much. And so what are we optimizing for? What problem are we solving? It's my favorite. It's probably the number one most frequently asked question that I ask to our portfolio companies whenever we're about to do anything, which is what problem are we solving? If the problem that we're solving is that I want to be content, well, there's a lot of ways to do that. And you don't need to do all these other things. If the problem you're solving is that you want to be the richest man in the world, well, you're going to have to have a lot of superiority complex. You're going to have a lot of crippling insecurity and you're going to have a lot of impulse control and you have to wait a long time. There's a quote from Jason Pargin that says, accept that all of your heroes are full of shit. Your <laughs> heroes aren't gods. They're just regular people who probably got good at one thing by neglecting literally everything else. Yeah. I just, I agree with the statement. Fucking money. Um, I, I, it's just so interesting to me. I've been thinking about this to do with uh, Billy McFarland. Uh, let, me, let me just get this in. Hit it. And that's okay. Because if they wanted that, then that's the problem that they're solving for. Like I get criticized all the time for work-life balance. People are like, well, you don't have any hobbies, Alex, and you don't whatever, right? And I'm like, I don't fucking want any. So why do I have to sacrifice things that I would prefer to do to do things I don't want to do to satisfy your objective measure of what you deem as work-life balance? Why? So that's what, what this is where you were talking about. Uh, was it optimized for the outcome or uh, what's the metric of success? Uh, yeah. That you were saying like, what, what is it that people are optimizing for? Right. right. It seems to me that you have stepped back and decided 
axiomatically, this is the thing that I'm optimizing for. That I enjoy most doing. Yes. That's, I enjoy playing the game. And so everything I do is about the game. Yes. My podcast is called The Game. I draw pictures all day about business. I write books about business. I make content about business. And I spend the rest of my draw? time. I've never seen a picture Oh, dude, you. $100 million offers. A zillion pictures in there. Oh, yeah, are yeah, they yeah. done by you? 100% all of the drawings are mine. And 100 million leads has like 100 doodles in it. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. Are you any good? Are they nice? I think so. Are they, go, are they cute? Yeah. They've got little cute. animals in? Yeah. If they don't have animals in, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to look at them. Oh, there's there's little bag of money, big bag of money. Like that's how. Uh, nice. I'm dead serious. That's sweet. But no, but like, and, and I spend the rest of my day doing business. Yeah. And so it's like, well, why don't you garden? Because well, I don't care. Here's the other, <laughs> here's the other thing, right? I, I, I always talk about this. Steffi Graf, um, they, one of the greatest female tennis players of all time. Yeah. And she gets tested when she's. 10 years old 11 years old and she's in some tennis academy and they gauge the players on two criteria uh-huh. they gauge them on desire to train uh and skill set all right and she was 10 out of 10 on both mm-hmm. so okay not only has she got the raw materials to make a phenomenal tennis player but she'll outwork you and to her it won't even feel like work that's fucking terrifying yeah and that's why i do think for the people that look at yourself and say uh, Alex is on a, a road to burnout. It's because you are using your theory of yeah. mind about how you would feel if you had to work as much as you do. Yes. But okay, what is the thing that you can do longer than anybody else? And to them, it looks like work. And to you, it looks like play or feels like play. What would that be? Oh, well, for me, it would be uh, computer games or knitting or rock music or whatever yeah, do it is. That. It's like, okay, <laughs> so imagine if you just got to do that all day, yeah. but instead of it being rock music, it was fucking business. Yeah. Uh, someone commented the other day, um, was it you're sprinting on a treadmill? Uh, they were concerned that the pace that the show is going out at was going to cause me to burn out. And in retrospect, I'm, you know, in five years time, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, I was moving too quick. But I don't, th- I don't think that. Like, I work at the pace that I like to work at. And I also like to see where those limits are. And that's exciting to me to go, okay, just how much harder can I go here? And then again, you, you've got to temper it with that's burnout. Like that's just the beginning of it. And you yeah. only know that after you've burned out like yeah. 30 times. Uh, but that's, it's tried to say after Atomic Habits by James Clear, right? But the intersection of like what you love to do, what you're good at and what you can be paid for is yeah. like slap bang in the middle of it. We'll get back to talking to Alex in one second, but first I need to tell you about HubSpot. 28% of some people's weeks are spent reading, deleting, and sorting emails, which means that very much email is not dead. Starting an email newsletter means that you've got direct connection with your audience. It means that you actually own your audience. It is the only way that you can own them without going through a third party like a social media platform. And from HubSpot right now, you can download their free email template that will teach you how to make your own newsletter. You can learn how to build an amazing email newsletter from scratch. They will check out a compiled lookbook of awesome examples from real publications. You can learn what it takes to create a successful email newsletter with exceptional design, unique and compelling copy, clickable calls to action, an excellent user experience, and there is a step-by-step guide about how to get your newsletter launched. So if you You've been thinking, I want to start doing a newsletter. This sounds cool. This sounds like uh, a good way for me to start writing, to build an audience that I can then sell to, or I can then move to other platforms as well. This is a fantastic place to begin. All that you need to do to download this free guide that will take you from no email newsletter to a fantastically designed email newsletter using industry inside information. All that you need to do is head to clickhubspot.com slash modern wisdom. That's clickhubspot.com dot com slash modern wisdom to download your free email template today what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe peace